plasm. Then diesel bodies. What are diesel bodies? They react with the basic dyes. These are basically stacks or the groups of rough endoplasmic reticulum. Then it has active transcriptionally active nucleus. These are the collections of the nasal bodies which are present within the cytoplasm of a neuron. Now classification of neurons. This all have been covered. Okay, this is a quick revision of the nervous part. Now, depending upon the number of processes, the neuron is divided into four types. The first one is unipolar, which has only one process. For example, the example you must know, or sab ki abhi kitabi. रजिस्टर सबके पास में होना चाहिए पेन होना चाहिए ठीक है जो जो एग्जाम्पल है कई बार एमसीक्यूज में पूछा जाता है यूनिपोलर नाउ वट इज यूनिपोलर एंड सूर्य यूनिपोलर आर कंसिडर्ड एज सेम इन द लेटेस्ट बुक्स बट यूनिपोलर इज दैट विच हैज अ सिंगल प्रोसेस विच हैज अ सिंगल सेल प्रोसेस बेस्ट एग्जाम्पल इज मिजन सिफ्लिक न्यूक्लियस ऑफ ट्राइजेमिनल नाउ मिजन सिफ्लिक न्यूक्लियस ऑफ ट्राइजेमिनल फिफ्थ क्रीनियल नाउ then pseudo unipolar is something which uh, it arises as a single uh, process but then it divides into two one is the central process and another one is peripheral process the peripheral process it carries information from the periphery and the central process transfer it to the central nervous system so it has two process but it appears to be one that is why it is known as pseudo unipolar and the big example here is dorsal root ganglion which are present in the spinal cord and sensory ganglion sensory ganglion and dorsal root ganglion these are best example for the pseudo unipolar neuron bipolar neuron which has two process one dendrite and axons best example is cells in the retina and the last one which is present commonly multipolar which has numerous dendrites in a single axon and the example for this are most of the cells neuron cells in present in the central nervous system pyramidal cells anterior horn cells in the spinal cord all are multipolar neurons so this is the classification based on the number of the process see unipolar pseudo unipolar bipolar and multipolar synapses axons then at the terminal part divides and forms axon terminals then there is a dilated part which is known as end bulbs these end bulbs are in contact with the another neuron or another cell like muscle cell yes to transfer the impulse from the one part to the another part now this uh, complex junction is known as synapse now the synapse here can be of different types it can be between an axon and a dendrite which is known as exodendritic synapse it can be between axon and the cell body of the another neuron which is exosomatic synapse it can be between two axons it that is exo axonic synapse and between two dendrites which is known as dendro dendritic synapse now neuroglial cells these are the supporting cells astrocytes have these long process which are known as pedicles they are tightly adhering to the blood vessels around and they take part in the formation of blood brain barrier okay so the question may be asked that um, which type of neuroglial cells form blood brain barrier astrocytes they have uh, this uh, long pedicles which sticks to the blood vessels in the pyometer around and form glial limitants which limits the entry of the substances then it also uh, wherever there is injury to the tissues it forms a scar like tissues and it is also place of energy metabolism oligodendrocytes the function all of you are aware of that yes it carries out function of myelination in the central nervous system a single cell can wrap several axons what are the space uh, present in between the myelin sheath is known as nodes of renwer and what is the significance of myelination it provides a insulating layer so that yes faster conduction so the conduction jumps from one node of renwer to the another this kind of conduction is known as yes saltatory conduction now the last la last one in the peripheral nervous system we have schwann cells which is analogous to the oligodendrocytes these are the flattened cells which have flattened nuclei and they perform the function of myelination in the peripheral nervous system 
माइक्रोग्लियल सेल्स अभी सब कुछ देखा हमने अब ब्लड ब्रेन बेरियन हो गया मेटाबोलिज्म हो गया देन मालिनेशन इज डन बट वॉट अबाउट द इन्फेक्शन टू कंट्रोल ऑफ इन्फेक्शन वेर एवर देर इज अटैक ऑफ माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिज्म फेगोसाइटोसिस इज कैरियड बाय दी माइक्रोग्लियल सेल्स यस सो दीज हैव स्मॉल प्रोसेसिस एंड अ राउंडेड प्लेस्ड न्यूक्लियस वॉट इज एपेंडाइमल सेल्स किसी ने पढ़ा एपेंडाइमल बहुत कॉमनली ये एम सी क्यूज में भी पूछा गया होगा आप लोगों से कहीं पे नहीं यस दीज आर दी कॉलमनर सेल्स विच लाइन्स दी वेंट्रिकल्स ऑफ ब्रेन एंड सेंट्रल कैनाल ऑफ स्पाइनल कॉर्ड एंड दे पार्टिसिपेट इन दी सिक्रीशन ऑफ सी एस एफ एंड ट्रांसपोर्ट ऑफ सी एस एफ सो हेयर वी कंप्लीट जनरल इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ द नर्वस टिश्यू वॉट आर द टू टाइप वन इज द नर्व सेल एंड अदर इज द सपोर्टिंग सेल वन इज द न्यूरोन एंड अदर आर न्यूरोग्लियल सेल्स ये सो वी हैव रेड टाइप्स ऑफ न्यूरोग्लियल सेल्स एंड टाइप्स ऑफ द न्यूरोन बेस्ड ऑन दी प्रेजेंस ऑफ नंबर ऑफ फाइबर्स देर इज ऑल्सो क्लासिफिकेशन बेस्ड ऑन दी इम्पल्स इट कैरीज आउट इफ इट कैरीज आउट सेंसरी इंफॉर्मेशन दैन इट विल बी सेंसरी न्यूरोन इफ इट कैरीज आउट मोटर इम्पल्स इट इज मोटर न्यूरोन एंड इफ इट कनेक्ट टू वन सेंसरी एंड अनदर मोटर न्यूरोन दीज आर नोन एज इंटर न्यूरोन्स और इंटर कैलेटेड न्यूरोन्स Another type is Golgi type one and Golgi type two neurons. One has a long axon and another has short axons. Golgi one has a long axon and Golgi two has short axons. These are the types of neurons. Now one by one we will discuss histology of some of the uh, tissues of the nervous system. First will be the peripheral nerve. ठीक है अब व्हाट विल बी व्हाट पार्ट ऑफ द न्यूरॉन्स इज गोइंग टू फॉर्म नर्व फाइबर यस द एक्सोन द माइलिनेटेड नर्व फाइबर्स दे फॉर्म बंडल्स ऑफ नर्व फाइबर्स एंड कलेक्टिवली दे फॉर्म अ नर्व यस दीज नर्व्स कैरीज आउट इंफॉर्मेशन वेदर सेंसरी और मोटर यस सो पेरीफ्रल नर्व इज अ कलेक्शन ऑफ मेनी नर्व फाइबर्स विच आर हेल्ड टूगेदर बाय कनेक्टिव टिश्यू The single axon is covered by myelin sheath. Then uh, they are surrounded by which type of connective tissue? Loose areolar connective tissue, which is known as endoneurium. Collection or bundles of the nerve fibers are known as fascicles, which are surrounded by perineurium. And all of these perineurium are surrounded by a single dense connective tissue layer, which is epineurium. epi mycelium is in the muscle and here it is neurium yes so we have endoneurium perineurium and epineurium outermost epineurium then perineurium and then so connective tissue layers one by one from inside out is endoneurium then perineurium and then epineurium now this is the histological section of the cross section of peripheral nerve इसमें आपको कैसे आइडेंटिफाई करना है सो देर आर कलेक्शन ऑफ द एग्जाम विच आर सीन एज सर्कुलर बॉडीज द आउटर मोस्ट लेयर इज द कनेक्टिव टिश्यू लेयर विच इज नोन एज एपीन्यूरियम दिस इज द आउटर मोस्ट लेयर विच इज एनक्लोजिंग ऑल द नाव फाइबर्स दिस इज एपीन्यूरियम नाव सिंगल बंडल वन वन इंडिविजुअल बंडल इज सराउंडेड बाय अनदर लेयर विच इज perineurium inside the perineurium we have number of axons yes now these axons are surrounded by myelin sheath now how to identify uh, the uh, these uh, cells peripheral mein how to identify schwann cells so aap jab ye myelin sheath dekhoge har ek jagah periphery pe nucleus present hai nucleus is stained blue and other part of the cells are stained pink in color Yes. So, what will be the visible? What will be the visible picture of uh, a peripheral nerve? You will see bundles of the nerve fibers which are enclosed in a single layer, which is epineurium. Then, single individual layer of bundle is perineurium, and inside the perineum, you have collections of nerve fibers which are surrounded by the myelin sheath and which has nucleus or Schwann cells at the periphery. This is the individual picture of one fascicle. there you can see myelin sheath axons in the center which are denoted by the red color and this is the connective tissue layer which is perineurium surrounding the fascicles now this is the section of the peripheral nerve in the longitudinal section 
in the longitudinal sections the axons will appear wavy and you don't have to confuse it with the connective tissue fibers these axons are elongated but they have a wavy appearance and they are continuous there is no breakage in between like that in the connective tissue fibers and then uh, by the uh, this uh, schwann cell nucleus are present in between these axons these are the schwann cell nucleus now the myelin sheath it is not stained by hna staining so there is visible white gap in between these axons which denotes myelin sheath special staining is required for the staining of myelin sheath yes so the whitish gap in between these nerve fibers it denotes myelin sheath okay so we have bundles or uh, uh, longitudinally running fibers which are the axons covered by the myelin sheath and we can see presence of elongated flattened nucleus in between which denotes the nucleus of schwann cells so is the picture of peripheral nerve cleared with all of you yes this one is uh, easy one because you have to just recognize the bundles of the fibers nothing else this is a wavy it may be get confused you may get confused with the connective tissue but then it's a continuous wavy picture and you have numerous nuclei present in between which are schwann cell nuclei <coughs> now uh, as we may move to the other part we have some terminologies which are little confusing yes in the central nervous system the collection of cell bodies uh, is known as is known as nuclei and in the peripheral nervous system the collection of the cell bodies of the neurons are known as ganglia in the central nervous system uh, these cell bodies they are present in the gray matter ठीक है जो कॉर्टेक्स पार्ट होता है इसमें ये सारी सेल बॉडीज प्रेजेंट होती है देन उसके नीचे कौन सा पार्ट होता है वाइट फाइबर्स का दैट इज फॉर्म बाय द एग्जॉन्स विद इन द वाइट फाइबर्स अगेन देयर आर कलेक्शन ऑफ न्यूक्लियर ठीक है दीज न्यूक्लियर डिनोट द कलेक्शन ऑफ सेल बॉडीज ऑफ न्यूरोन तो ग्रे मैटर्स इज मेड अप ऑफ सेल बॉडीज वाइट मैटर इज मेड अप ऑफ माइलिनेटेड एग्जॉन्स and nuclei again these are present these are the clusters of cell bodies which are present embedded into the white matter and uh, these nuclei are found in the thalamus in the brain stem in the spinal cord so the word nuclei denotes cell bodies of neuron yes and ganglion ganglions are the again collections of cell bodies of neurons which are present outside the central nervous system yes so there are two types of ganglions there is a sensory ganglion and there is a motor ganglion now we have to discuss histology of these two types of ganglions what is sensory and what is motor and how they will appear in the histological picture so first one is dorsal root ganglion which is a sensory ganglion present in the spinal cord now dorsal root ganglion they have cell bodies which are rounded yes they have a rounded appearance they have a centrally placed rounded nucleus and they are present in the uniform pattern in the group theek okay? hai uniformly rounded rahenge rounded nucleus rahega centrally placed nucleus and they are present in the group and individual cell is surrounded by low cuboidal cells which are known as ciliate cells yes we in the pns we are schwann cell supporting cells and the ciliate cells these are low cuboidal cells which surrounds the which surrounds rounded cell uh, bodies of dorsal root ganglion yes and these are present in uniform pattern in group and then they are surrounded by the axons white fibers then the best example for this sensory ganglion is dorsal root ganglion and sensory ganglion of cranial nerve like trigeminal and vestibulo copular and glosso pharyngeal nerve these are some of the examples of sensory ganglion so let us look at the picture of microscopic anatomy we have these bundles of bundles of what what are these these are the cell bodies which are which these are the collections of cell bodies which are present outside the and what is their function they carry the sensory information now what type of neurons are they 
dorsal root ganglion is what type of neuron it is sensory neuron it is on the basis of process number of process is present here it is what type it is pseudo unipolar so these uh, cell bodies are of pseudo unipolar neurons these are rounded in appearance present in uniform groups you can see here in this picture these are present in uniform group they have a centrally placed nucleus and at the periphery they have lobes to border cells which are known as telate cells so these telate cell are basically neuroglial cell so this is the picture of dorsal root ganglion am i clear to all of you how you are going to identify dorsal root ganglion or sensory root ganglion there are collections of the cell bodies which are rounded in appearance they have rounded centrally placed nucleus and then each of these are surrounded by low cuboidal cells now why there is no interruption why there is a continuation of these cells present around why they are forming a uniform capsule around these cell bodies because this is pseudo unipolar ganglion it uh, does not synapse with any other any other nerve cell so it is not interrupted so it has a continuation of uh, lining of telate cells around its periphery yes then it is surrounded by the numbers of axons on the sides and it's basically least uh, this is another picture of dorsal root or sensory root ganglion next is autonomic ganglion in the autonomic ganglion we have two types of neurons preganglionic and postganglionic neuron and these are basically motor in nature yes so preganglionic neurons these are coming from the central nervous system and they are synapsing at the with the post ganglionic so we have preganglionic neuron it lies in cns and their axons extend from cns up to the autonomic ganglion then postganglionic neuron it lies in autonomic ganglion and their axon supplies the smooth cells and the glands and viscera on hne staining these will appear angular or flattened cells not rounded as we have seen in the dorsal root ganglion these basically have a angular bodies and one more differentiating feature is that their nucleus is not centrally placed they have eccentric nucleus and these are scattered and not present in the uniform pattern in groups like as in dorsal root ganglion all these cells are disrupted by the presence of the axons in between them yes no there is no uniform pattern as visible in the dorsal root ganglion what are the examples here for the autonomic ganglion sympathetic and parasympathetic what is the example for the sympathetic ganglion anyone where they are located sympathetic ganglion sympathetic trunk in the in the cilia trunk any other example para vertebral ganglion and yes and where are these parasympathetic ganglion located where are these present this all you are going to study there are number of parasympathetic ganglion for example ciliary ganglion pterygopalatine ganglion aortic ganglion these all are parasympathetic ganglion basically sympathetic uh, part is uh, thoraco lumbar so it's coming from t1 to l2 part of the spinal cord and parasympathetic is coming from craniosacral now what about the microscopic anatomy so this is the microscopic anatomy that we were talking about in the motor ganglion there are no groups they are angular cells eccentric placed nucleus and they are disrupted by the presence of axons so till here everything is clear with you peripheral nerve ganglion what are the two types of ganglion 
sensory and motor in the sensory what will be the picture and in the motor what will be the picture am i clear mostly in the histology we show you sympathetic which is easily available so we have sympathetic ganglion so what you are going to sympathetic ganglion we will revise it again you have to answer all of you pay attention next we will come to the spinal cord cerebellum and cerebrum part thank you so what is the function of spinal cord where it is located in the vertebral column spinal cord is basically continuous uh, from the lower part of the medulla oblongata from the upper margin of the c1 till the lower border of the l1 vertebrae yes it is 45 cm in length in the cross section the picture of spinal cord appears like this now uh, what are the landmarks here in the anterior part there is a deep groove here which is known as anterior median fissure not sulcus it is deep that is why it is a fissure so it's a ventral median fissure or anterior median fissure posteriorly it is a it has a faint sulcus which is known as dorsal median sulcus then on both the lateral part ventrally and dorsally we have ventrolateral and dorsolateral sulcus in the center we have h shaped gray matter what is the gray matter in cns what does it denote collection of cell bodies so here in the gray matter there are cell bodies of the neurons and the neuroglial cells and in the periphery this part is myelinated nerve fibers which carries the ascending and descending tract basically what is the function of spinal cord it carries information from the peripheral part to the cns and it carries a motor impulse from the cns to the peripheral part and it also coordinates reflex yes so this is the gross uh, feature of spinal cord yes in the cross section how does it appear it appears as a rounded rounded figure which has anteriorly it has a fissure which is known as anterior median fissure posteriorly it has posterior median sulcus in the center it has a h shape gray matter now this h shaped gray matter is interrupted by a central canal through which csf is passed from the central part to the this part so csf is present in the central canal so it is surrounded by low low columnar ciliated cells which are known as ependymal cells the connecting link between the two limbs of h this is the gray commissure so we have h shaped keep silence so we have h shaped gray matter surrounded by white matter yes now what is present the white matter white matter consists of myelinated exon fibers now what are the parts of this white matter this is anterior funiculus on the lateral side we have lateral funiculus and posteriorly we have posterior funiculus these anterior horns the anterior part of the h is known as anterior horns these are the multipolar neurons yes from where the ventral root of the spinal nerve arises keep silence or go out kis type ke nerve fibers arise honge yahan se motor spinal nerve is a mixed nerve 31 pairs of spinal nerves arises from the spinal cord so it has both motor part and the sensory part so motor part is contributed from the anterior horn of the spinal cord posterior horn yes it consists of sensory neurons बेसिकली यहाँ पे क्या आएगा सेंट्रल प्रोसेस ऑफ दी डॉसल रूट गैंगलियन तो यहाँ पर क्या लेके आएगा इट कैरीज इंफॉर्मेशन फ्रॉम इट पेरिफल प्रोसेस टू दी स्पाइनल कॉर्ड दिस इज अस्टोलॉजिकल पिक्चर इट्स वेरी इजी टू आइडेंटिफाई बिकॉज कोई भी हिस्टोलॉजी पिक्चर इश्यू ऐसा अपेयर नहीं होगा so spinal cord is very easy to identify but then how you are going to how you are uh, you know telling the features what are the cells which are present here wo koi nahi bata pata kyunki wo to humne padha hi nahi hai hai na so we have a centrally placed gray matter which is darkly stained it is h shape it has anterior horn and posterior horn anterior horn have multipolar multipolar न्यूरोन्स ये एग्जाम्पल्स में डिस्कस किया था मल्टीपोलर के बेस्ट एग्जाम्पल्स में हमने एक एग्जाम्पल दिया था इंटीरियर हॉर्न सेल्स ऑफ दी स्पाइनल कॉर्ड सो हेयर इंटीरियर हॉर्न सेल्स आर प्रेजेंट हेयर पोस्टीरियर हॉर्न सेल्स 
which are central process of the pseudo unipolar ganglion that is dorsal root ganglion the numerous interneurons are also present which connect the sensory part with the motor part so from here the dorsal root of the spinal nerve enters and from here ventral root of the spinal nerve exits in the surrounding we have myelinated nerve fibers as we have said earlier also we have discussed that myelin is not seen here with the hni staining that is why a small white gap appears here in the picture which denotes the myelin sheet so we have exons white tracts which are different types of ascending ascending tracts means they are carrying sensory information and descending means they are carrying motor information from the cns to the periphery yes in the center we have this question may be asked this is a very common question what are the cell lining of the central canal what is the cell lining epidermal cells and what are the epidermal cells shaped low columnar ciliated cells this is a multipolar neurons of the anterior horn this is the hand drawn diagram ye sabko aana chahiye abhi to time nahi hai nahi to main banwa deti abhi photos zyada important thi next we have cerebellum what is the function of cerebellum balance control muscular movement yes muscles and joint cells fine art movements so basically cerebellum consists of two cerebellar hemisphere in the center it is connected by the vermis as you can see from here it has numerous transverse fissures which divides it into number of folds these folds are known as folium so each of the folium it has a outer cortex part and a inner medulla white part white matter outer cortex is gray matter and the inner part is white matter the outer cortex part it has three layers outer molecular middle parkanji cell layer and innermost is the granular layer these three layers are present in the cortex of cerebellum then we have white matter which consists of myelinated exons and in the center of this my, uh, white matter we have again collection of the neurons which forms the nuclei of the cerebellum so from the medial to the lateral side we have vestigial nucleus just for the knowledge this will be discussed again in the neuroanatomy we have vestigial nucleus globosus nucleus then emboliform nucleus and dentate nucleus these are the nuclei which are embedded in the white matter of the cerebellum so how uh, how would you describe the microscopic anatomy of cerebellum so the cerebellum is divided into number of the folds by the presence of transverse fissures each of the fold is known as folium each folium it has an outer cortex and the inner medulla the outer cortex is the gray matter inner part is the white matter the cortex it has three layers outermost is molecular then we have parkanji cells and the inner granular ye sirf jo picture hai this is showing the cortex part yes now outer molecular layer what are the cells present here please pay attention in the outer molecular layer we have two types of cell superficial layer have stellate cells these are small cells which are present in the superficial part of the molecular layer and in the deeper part of the molecular layer we have basket cells then there are fibers of the parkanji cells which are uh, present here dendrites of the parkanji cells also and climbing fibers which are coming from the inferior olivary nucleus and also we have fibers of the granular cells coming from the granule layer so what are the cells in the molecular layer फाइबर्स तो जितने भी सेल्स हैं वो सबकी फाइबर्स यहाँ रीच कर रहे हैं मेनली दो टाइप के सेल हैं सुपरफिशियल में वी हैव स्टीलेट सेल एंड डीपर वी हैव बास्केट सेल्स देन वी हैव इन द मिडल वी हैव पर्कंजी सेल लेयर व्हिच इज डिनोटेड बाय दिस रेड लार्ज फ्लास शेप्ड सेल्स so this parkanji cell is a single layer cell व्हिच है व्हिच आर लार्जर इन साइज दे आर दे आर फ्लास शेप्ड एंड their apex is directed upwards and their dendrites are projected into the molecular layer and their axon is projected downwards towards the nuclei of the white matter yes so the 
white fibers axon is directed downwards in the deeper layer and the dendrites are directed towards the superficial layer so this purkinje cell layer it also has these uh, these basket cells they gives a fibers which holds like a basket uh, and gives support to the purkinje cell so they make contact with the purkinje cell through the numerous branches so they arborize around purkinje cells and form a basket around purkinje cells so purkinje cells is the middle layer then we have the inner layer which is the granule cell layer the third layer of the cerebellum in this we have small granule cells and a large golgi cells purple color it denotes a golgi cells and these small these are the granule cells granule cells layer have fibers projected upwards towards the molecular layer here they synapse with the dendrites of the purkinje cells and the dendrites here they synapse with the mozzi fibers again these uh, golgi cells they are axons the synapses with the mozzi fibers and also with the uh, these uh, purkinje cells in the superficial layer this will be little bit confusing but uh, ek baar aap padhenge dobara padhenge to samajh mein aayega theek hai to ab humne kya kya padha hai yahan pe kis type ke cells hain superficial ke andar we have stelet cells and basket cells in the middle we have purkinje cells which are the largest one these are flash shaped then in the third layer we have golgi and granules golgis are larger than the granule cells yes now what are the fibers that we have read here climbing fibers and the mossy fibers climbing fibers are coming from the inferior olivary nucleus and from the medulla and mossy fibers are coming from the pons vestibular part and uh, one more part that um, this is vestibular and uh, we have pons part and from the thalamus we have mossy fibers now these mossy fibers they are synapsing with they are synapsing with yes golgi and also with the granules so here they are forming a glomeruli of cerebellum see this is the dilated end of the mossy fibers this is the dendrite of the granule cells and this is the axon of the golgi cells all of these three are uniting here and synapsing with each other so there is a light a stained area which is formed here this circular area is known as glomeruli of cerebellum which is basically synapsing of these three fibers fibers of uh, this axons of golgi cells dendrite cells of the granules and mossy fibers the nano most part we have myelinated axons in the cerebellum this is the hand on diagram of the cerebellum so you must be aware of the three layers of the cerebral cortex and the innermost layer and the cerebellar nuclei basically pontus cerebellar fibers are uh, carried by the mossy fibers and olivary fibers are carried by the climbing fibers climbing fibers are going towards the superficial layer and mossy fibers are present in the granule cell which is a deeper layer and the last is cerebrum now the picture of cerebellum is little confusing jab bhi aap isko project karenge kabhi bhi aapko individual layer aapko nahi differentiate ho payega ye thoda tough rehta hai theek hai isme jo cortex hai uske six layers hai jaise abhi humne yahan pe cortex mein teen layers dekhi hai cells ki cerebellum is very easy to identify again because it has folds and the cortex and it's very beautiful picture which is visible but cerebrum is very tough to identify because there is a, a patchwork type thing is present but it's not easily recognizable at your uh, level like this तो so, सबसे टफ स्लाइड जो होती है इसमें पूरे नर्वस सिस्टम में वो होती है सैरी ब्राम की ठीक है ना व्हाट पीपल डू दे नो दे नो द पिक्चर ऑफ सैरी ब्राम दे नो देर आर सिक्स लेयर्स सो दे ड्रॉ द सिक्स लेयर्स एंड दे राइट डाउन द नेम्स एंड दे टेल टेल द नेम्स ऑफ ऑल दीज बट दे डोंट नो वॉट आर द सेल्स प्रेजेंट इन दीज लेयर्स so seri bram basically it's a convoluted structures which has gyrus these gyrus are separated by the cell guy now each gyrus it has outer cortex which has gray matter and inner part has white matter 
now this cortex part it has these five types of cells yes first one is horizontal cells of casal second is granule cells or stellate cells third is pyramidal cells fifth is fusiform cells uh, fourth is fusiform cells and fifth is cells of martinodi you can take the picture also if somebody wants now the first one is horizontal cells of casal which is present in the first layer as you can see in the picture these uh, fibers are running parallel to the surface so these uh, horizontal cells of casal are present in the superficial top first layer and these have number of fibers these have uh, axons arising from the center of the cell body and it has dendrites arising from the poles of the cell bodies these are running horizontally parallel to the surface then second is the granule cells or the stellate cells these are small sized cells which has smaller processes these are present in the second layer and in the fourth layer these are the smaller cells then we have pyramidal cells now pyramidal cells are the important cells this is cerebellum me we had large flask shaped cells which are the purkinje cells here we have pyramidal cells now as uh, we go along deeper to the layers of the cerebrum the size of the pyramidal cells start increasing they, uh, they are larger in the motor cortex and these are known as cells of bits pyramidal cells are known as cells of bits where in the motor cortex motor cortex they are larger in size and they are known as cells of bits now these pyramidal cells are present extends from the second to the fifth layer then we have fusiform cells which are present in the innermost layer in the sixth layer these are spindle shaped cells again which has dendrites running upwards and the axon moving downwards one more important point of the pyramidal cells is that that it has a axons running downwards which forms the projection fibers of the cerebrum the projection fibers of the cerebrum are formed by axons of pyramidal cells it has dendrites which runs uh, transversely and upwards and its axons are running downwards towards the deeper layer towards the white fibers layer so projection fibers of cerebrum these are formed by pyramidal cells and the last is cells of martinodi which is present in the 3 third to sixth layer again it is small pyramidal shaped cells its apex again poles are giving the dendrites and the lower base part is giving the axons these are present in 3 to 6 and more present in the deeper layers so what are the five types of cells we have discussed now what are the six types of layers of the cerebrum in the cortex first one is molecular layer or plexiform layer same way we had discussed molecular layer in the cerebellum second is external granular layer third is pyramidal external pyramidal layer fourth is internal granular layer fifth is internal internal pyramidal layer and sixth is multiform layer sixth is multiform layer so we have molecular layer external granular external pyramidal internal granular internal pyramidal and multiform layer now one by one we will discuss it molecular layer now you all know what is present in the molecular layer which type of cell is present in the molecular layer first one horizontal cells of casal are present it also have numerous neuroglial cells second is external granular layer it has small pyramidal cells and stellate numerous stellate or granule cells the second type cells that we had discussed third is external pyramidal layer which has medium size pyramidal cells as we go deeper the size of pyramidal cell starts increasing so we have medium size pyramidal cells few stellate that is granule cells and cells of martinodi then we have internal granular large granule cells and it also has horizontal fibers which are known as external band of bilayer now these external band of bilayer are nothing but the white fibers which are running in the internal granular layer so we have external band of bilayer likewise in the internal pyramidal layer we have internal layer of bilayer 
in this layer we found larger size of pyramidal cells and these type of cells are known as cells of cells of beds in the motor area of cerebrum these cells are very big and they form large pyramidal cells of beds last one is multiform layer now with spindle shaped cells fusiform cells are present in abundance in the multiform layer these cells are perpendicular to the directions of the surface and they have dendrites coming from its poles and from the center axons arises white matter these are deeper to the sixth layer consist of small round nuclei of neuroglial cells and numerous nerve processes now this is the hand drawn diagram you have to draw this diagram in the histology section which also describes the different parts along with the layers that we have discussed outer and the inner layer of bilarger jaise jaise hum superficial layer se deeper layer mein aa rahe hain size jo hai cells ka increase ho raha hai pyramidal cell jo hai internal pyramidal layer is also known as ganglionic layer so you can also write it ganglionic layer or internal pyramidal layers this is photomicrograph of cerebrum this is the most toughest slide in the whole section yes so this is all about today's topic now we will discuss each of the picture histology picture because there was little disturbance we are not going to discuss each of the points but we will discuss just the picture first we had discussed about the peripheral now so there were two pictures one was cross section and another was longitudinal section so what you are going to visualize in the cross section bundles of the fibers yes now you have to answer me pay attention this is photomicrograph of of peripheral nerve cross section of peripheral nerves so there are bundles of nerve fibers which are known as fascicles these are surrounded by perineurium and the outer connective tissue layer is and they have centrally placed axons which are surrounded by the myelin sheath and these nuclei denote the nuclei of schwann cells now this is the vv picture of longitudinal section of the peripheral nerve and these have again schwann cell nuclei these white gap denotes the myelin sheath next there are two type of ganglion dorsal that is sensory and sympathetic or the motor this is the picture of dorsal root ganglion so how you are going to identify uniform pattern they are present in the group rounded in appearance rounded nucleus yes and in the periphery they are surrounded by the axons one more important point that we have discussed that they have a uniform capsule covering of stellate cells ye jo blue color ke andar denote kar raha hai these are the nuclei of the stellate cells which are present around the cells of the dorsal root ganglion and why they are uniform because they are not synapsing with any other neuron second picture this is of sympathetic that is motor ganglion now there is no uniform they are scattered everywhere they have angular cell bodies and they have eccentrically placed nucleus nucleus is not present at the center and these are interrupted by the presence of nerve fibers and yes one more point they are surrounded by the stellate cell but their the space is interrupted because they have preganglionic and postganglionic fibers these cell bodies synapse with each other so there is a space interruption in the capsule lining the these uh, the periphery of these cells which is formed by the stellate cells yes so there is interruptions here and no interruption in the dorsal root ganglion now the third picture is of spinal cord this darker stain at shape is gray matter and surrounded by the white matter white matter has myelinated axons gray matter has anterior horn and posterior horn in thoraco thoraco lumbar region we have extra horn which is lateral horn sympathetic fibers jo hai wo yahan se jayenge then in the center we have a central canal which is lined by the epidermis anterior horn cells are motor posterior horn cells are sensory and hum columns ko jo white columns hain unko funiculus bolte hain so there are three columns divided by the fissures in the sulcus we have anterior lateral and posterior funiculus the word funiculus is used for white column then we have cerebellum 
Sairi Belam again, it uh, shows branching pattern because of presence of the transfers. It has a rounded folium. Each folium it has cortex and the inner white matter. Cortex has three layers. Which which si layers are its inner? Outer molecular, middle parenchyma, and the innermost is inner granula. Now, ये cells के नाम याद करना तो हम जब जब read करेंगे उसी के बाद हमें पता चलेंगे इसमें main main हमने क्या पढ़ा है superficial के अंदर दो type के cells हैं ciliate and basket. Middle के अंदर they have flask shaped large cells which are parenchyma cells and the innermost we have Golgi and granules. Two types of fibers are interrupting here. The one is climbing fibers and other one is mossy fibers mossy fibers is uh, synapsing in the granular layer and climbing fibers is uh, synapsing in the molecular layer now these uh, synapsing forms a lightly stained area around these three fibers fibers of granule golgi and and mossy fibers this is known as glomerulus of cerebellum then the last we have cerebrum Cerebrum has six layers. They have different type of cells, which are of five types: horizontal cells of Kazan. This you have to remember. Go and read this chapter. Granule cells. Then we have pyramidal cells, fusiform, and cells of Martinelli. The most important out is the motor cortex. का क्या feature होता है? Pyramidal cells. Largest cells, largest pyramidal cells in the motor cortex are known as cells of Bethe. ठीक है? Then what are the layers? Six layers present here. The outer molecular, then external granular, external pyramidal, internal granular, then outer layer of bilayer, then we have internal pyramidal, inner layer of the bilayer, and then we have multiform. And all these cells are scattered here. Pyramidal cells, जो है, they increase in size as we get deeper, and inner layer has the largest size of the pyramidal cells. पिरामिडल सेल्स के ही फाइबर्स जो हैं वो क्या बना रहे हैं एग्जेंस ऑफ पिरामिडल सेल्स दे आर फॉर्मिंग